Hello, questers. Welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. Uh, this week, we are taking a break from the ghouls to introduce some brand new player characters. So pull out your fantasy name tags, because we're about to get introduced. You guys are going to be hopping onto the back of Torlan, your uh, giant turtle-sized fortress city. Uh, and I think it's probably about time that we reintroduce our new cast, some returning, some new. Sam, hello. Welcome. What's up? Hey, guys. I'm Sam, and I will be playing Feral. Uh, not a new character. She is back from the old one with a few major changes. I can't really say they're slight. Um, I'm a baby Stormcast, reforged. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm traversing the landscape, a brand new landscape, trying to find meaning in my life. Only two things are absolutely certain. Everything I do is for Sigmar, and I am slowly forgetting things in my past. Aw, that's I love that. That's great. I also feel like I'm forgetting many things about my past but yeah we'll do exactly what <laughs> sam did goldfish memory yeah uh the other returning character we have is franco hello oh i'm a i'm a i'm a character <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in the um in the last arc i played uh, a rotting uh corpse and here i am again as a rotting corpse but i'll be playing somebody different <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm back again i played Redis last time I'm, I'm trying to change things up a little bit. I, f I felt like I wanted to try something a bit new, so I'll be playing uh, the the character of Cassandra Turner, who's I just wanted to play a cow cowboy, so I was like, ah, I decided cowgirl. That's where I'm at. Awesome. All right, and then we have a first of two new players, Mariel. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mariel. I am a video game artist living in Vancouver, BC, and I will be playing a Dwarden Endron Master uh, named Bort Jortson. Bort Jortson. Um, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I am extremely old, extremely bald, going blind, and I only communicate in grunts, so... <laughs> Oh my god. I oh, wish yeah, you all yeah, the best yeah. of luck. <laughs> oh, in my goodness. understanding me. I love it. I love it. Bort Jorston. Wait, Bort? What Bort Jorston? What's the name again? Bort. First name Bort. <laughs> Last name Jorston. Does, wait, question. Does he wear yes. jorts? <laughs> I mean, he's wearing a lot of armor, and a lot of um, his his ether rig covers up a lot of uh, clothing that could be underneath. So that might just have to be a question that gets answered later after some of our travels together. <laughs> oh yeah, the mystery of Bort's shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the fourth, but uh, I, was, I don't know how else to phrase that. The fourth, but something else in our group is Dylan. That's welcome, welcome. That describes me um, to a T, I will say. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Dylan. Um, it's been a while since I've uh, played a tabletop RPG. A few years. Um, played a lot in my teens. Uh, today, I will, well, and hopefully in the future as well, I'll be playing Maris Honeysuckle. She's a human trade pioneer where uh, Bort is a few words. She talks way, way way too much uh, and way too fast. <laughs> so uh, that'll be an interesting dynamic. Um, she's a hyperactive little thing that loves to set trades. Uh, she's setting out on her own, recently soul bound. Uh, I would really describe her as a really over eager, happy to be here intern uh, with a rat tail. <laughs> so like her hair, she's got a rat tail for her hair and <laughs> Oh, I thought she actually had a rat tail. <laughs> Not at all. I had to, I had to like, <laughs> her hair, rat tail in her hair, and a Mastori companion named Pickles that she feeds Pickles. What does Pickles look like? <laughs> kind of, maybe like a mink, maybe like a ferret, like some vague, like, 
long rodent uh, that hides inside the <laughs> folds of her clothing. She wears really loose clothing, so it'll just like pop out at odd ends, like from pantling, her arm, her collar, and it just chills out on top of her. What's that? What's that called when people would do ferret legging? Is that what it's called? What? People, would do it. people used to hey, hang on it's a thing whoa she's not gonna skin her 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 baby wait no, no. that came out wrong Fair. but like her pet <laughs> that's, also that's not enough to make a pair of pants no yeah. I mean, very for big board parent. for his jorts but for yeah <laughs> to match up my jorts <laughs> What were you trying to say, Dave? What is a pair well, of legging? No, it, I gotta get to the bottom of this. I don't think we can start without... without... A, no, we can't. Yeah, what's a, what's a thing that apparently people have done? Uh, according to Wikipedia, this is this is probably going to get cut. Ferret legging <laughs> was an endurance test or stunt in which ferrets were trapped in trousers worn by a participant. Oh my god. Also known as put them down and ferret down trousers. Um. I will say that she no. doesn't do that, and she just, you know, <laughs> it's it's cold, and she has a ferret that burrows into her armpit. At the beginning of every quest for episode, we like to throw in a, a nice little useless fact at the beginning. Today I learned. <laughs> yep. Yeah. As has been established with the other group, you are part of an expedition to a lost archipelago uh, called the Slagmire Isles. You have traveled from the port city of Anvilgard on the back of the Queen of the Leviadons. We're talking like, a, you know, city block sized giant turtle. Um, and on the back of that is this little island, you know, covered in um, vegetation, rock, uh, and at its center, you know, several um, castle towers. You know, it's been about three months since you uh, departed from the port city of Anvilgard um, before you're able to reach the Slagmire Isles. Uh, in order to uh, tap into power and bas it's basically like friendship points, um, your your souls have been intertwined. So you actually have an element of connection with every other player in your binding. So that's going to be, you know, you four as well as uh, who you've also met already. Frostglade, the Kernoff Hunter, Okri Okrison, the, oh God, he's an Aether Chemist, I think, Aether Chemist, and Phallus. <laughs> uh Ossus Boson, the Black Ark Corsair, who I'm sure you've mocked relentlessly on your your ride over. So I want to know a little bit, you know, we've have uh you've had three months. Uh I want to just know like what's uh what's your character's been up to? You know, you've been waiting to go and go get to this region, go out on different kinds of missions and explore the great unknown. What how would your character kill that much time on the ship? How many people are on this turtle ship? Great question. So um, the binding aside, which is the binding is basically referring to all the, the player characters. It's a, it's a pretty small crew, all things considered. Um, you know, it's, it'd be in the range of between 20 and 30. Uh, I think Maris would be spending most of her time trying to make friends with everyone, especially whoever is cooking, making the food. Um, mm, okay. She's also um, has a trade merchant background, so likely making connections there, seeing if there's perhaps any other trade pioneers um, that are on the turtle, and asking way too many questions to the point that she probably has a few people that just don't like her and try to avoid her. Making friends at any cost. Yeah, pretty much. Like, just a little too friendly. I think that's great. I think also, like, just to, to kind of maybe seed the idea, I know Okri Okrison is also, uh, he's here to also establish trade routes. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you guys meet up and do mission stuff, maybe that's something you might want to consider. Perfect. Now, you said this is a, a block-sized uh, turtle so it's it's quite large there's is mm -hmm. there i assume that there's got to be some sort of like stables or some sort of like place where they'll keep live animals as transporting to yeah. and from the islands that's right so you know if we're looking at from like the the back of the turtle you know from a kind of a top down perspective mm -hmm. um at the very uh head of the turtle like kind of around like the shell that's kind of up around its neck um there's a kind of forward tower um it's kind of like an observation post uh and there's a, a forest glade actually up there so forest being a little bit generous but a thick kind of garden um in the very center of the back is this uh central spire that, that most of the operations are working out of behind that is a plaza and then there's a few other kind of outbuildings like built up around it. is is there perhaps like a, a place to to grab some drinks on this turtle as well absolutely so you're talking like more tavern style mm -hmm. you're talking like cafe like what do you think oh we're thinking we're thinking hard alcohol Hard alcohol, yeah. I think there's definitely a uh, some kind of tavern here. 
I want to get a name of it actually. What's what's the cowgirl's favorite drink? Um, <laughs> well, I think it's it's just a a simple spirit, honestly, nothing too fancy. Now, Dave, are you asking me for the name of this thing? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh man, this is something that's always difficult. Is the Turtle is being soup. a bar? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, very, no, 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 no. disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Um, the bar is called Top Shelf, and it's uh, it's got like one too many L's. Oh. Top Shelf. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> um, so Top Shelf, you, you probably have frequented Top Shelf quite a, quite a bit. I imagine the sign is kind of like hanging outside on a post, and it's kind of like shaped like a shell. Uh, and mm-hmm. it has like these kind of cartoony block letters, top shelf. Um, and it kind of like you know, sweeps back and forth in the wind. Uh, inside of uh, the halfling bartender, um, very, uh, very attentive, um, you know, kind of came along, I think, for the uh, the chance to, you know, serve like really like, you know, significant heroes of the age. And I think is, is kind of making do with um, with your ilk right now. Um, <laughs> but, less uh, than what he'd prefer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I imagine Cassandra would feel pretty at home next to any sort of, like, cattle. She'd you know, take care of them, make sure that they're not um, uh, hurting themselves. And, you know, cattle, like, standing for a long time, they may need their, their hooves trimmed or they may need to be brushed down. So she's kind of busy getting some busy work done there. Um, mm-hmm. But in the evenings, you'll find her down at the top shelf uh, where she will happily uh, challenge anybody to a drinking contest that's wonderful i like that cool so yeah spending the time uh, caring for animals drinking away um mm-hmm. actually uh, let's do uh let's do a check here uh i should have also done this for maris so maris will jump back uh for you for a second um let's do a uh beast handling uh beast handling soul check for uh cassandra okay um this is going to just basically kind of establish how you've been um been kind of handling handling those beasts if you know what I mean, uh, over this whole time. <laughs> no, Dave, um, what do you mean? And... I need to get specific right now. <laughs> Properly and <laughs> respectfully. <laughs> yeah. Care and respect, Dave. <laughs> so we're going to do our first our first check with this group. So basically I'm going to say it's a beast handling soul check. Okay. And the difficulty is going to be, uh, let's do four two. So that's going to mean you're going to need a four or more on at least nice. two dice. Yeah. Okay. So I have two soul, and I have one beast handling, so that should be three die. But I have That's a right. focus in beast handling, so I do something with that. Yes, so you're going to be able to add uh, add to one of your results. Okay, so I'll roll three dice right now. i got to get mm-hmm. above two fours. I roll, I get a five, a six, and a four. Hey, there you go. Oh. You handle the fuck out of those animals. <laughs> <laughs> one of them gets rowdy, and I just fucking give it the give it a tap on its flank i'm like hey yeah you better settle down there and it listens it like it kind of just like sloops down it's like oh, 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 as if it were to say <laughs> that. that evil eye um i love the I, the visualization of just like you know on the back of this giant turtle there's the stable with all these like horses and like just this mini ranch on the back that's fantastic all right and then for maris i think let's do we're basically gonna see like you you're kind of kind of charming people you're kind of making some friends right yeah, she's she's got she's a diplomat. She has that as a talent. So people. What just social like, skills do you have? Uh, not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean by social skills? By that, she has <laughs> diplomat as a talent. So like, even if people are annoyed by her, they they're still nice to her. So she just assumes everyone <laughs> likes her. <laughs> Diplomat is more of like a position than it is no, no, a talent no, it's or a actual, skill. No, it's a legit talent. I have it right here. Advantage of post test when resolving conflicts, in this book gauge right here. moves, or intention or lies. Respected and people are cordial. That's For wonderful. Her. It's basically like being professional with her. <laughs> yeah, but she's not professional. <laughs> the dichotomy of man. Is it a Let's mind do, role? I'm trying to figure out what the best way to do this. Let's do a devotion soul. Well, Dave, maybe it might help to explain what the three attributes are that uh, each. That's a has. great question. Yeah, sorry, I explained um, this to the other folks. Um, so the there's body, mind, and soul, and it basically is like the type of attributes that you would affect. So I um, when I give you a check, you know, there's like the default kind of like uh, 
application, which is like, for example, lore is normally mined. However, depending on the situation, it actually might not be. Like it might be, you know, lore soul. So in this case, um, we're going to do a soul devotion check. A soul devotion. Um, and that's going to be a 4-1. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, uh, what's your devotion? Um, I have nothing in devotion. Do you have another social skill you want to use instead? I have intuition. Let's do intuition. Sure. That's kind of reading other people. You can yeah. do that. That'll, that'll totally uh, work. But that's using, that's not using soul though. And that's using mind? Yeah. Let's go for it. Intuition, okay. mind. Let's do a 4-1. Okay, so uh, I don't have my dice here yet, so we don't have that satisfying <gasps> sound. Oh, I know. no. I know. Do you want me to make the sound? I can make the oh, sound. Can you please make the sound for me? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I can. <laughs> what did you drop? <laughs> yeah, that was like a single dice. <laughs> just, oh, wait, how do you <laughs> put it in four? <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't know if I have four. I have That's three. Okay. <laughs> That's... <laughs> All right. What are you dropping? What is that? <laughs> they're they're made of yeah. they're made of lead. Okay. Yeah. Is it that loud? <laughs> yeah. They are. It just, they sound heavy. Dice. Yeah, it's good. It's it's yeah. very, it's very like yeah. this is the results and nothing ka-chunk, else. Ka-chunk. Yeah. Yes. And don't <laughs> question it. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what my success is supposed to be, but I rolled a two two six two. Okay, great. So when I say four one, it basically is the first number is like the success number, so like yep. four or more, and one means how many you need to get. So oh. a four one check, you need to get at least one four, which sounds like you did, right? I passed, yep, I got a six. All right, awesome. So ah. uh, I think, you know, through this whole period of, of trying to like get a sense of, um, you know, the type of people that are on this uh, on this expedition, um, a lot of folks are are coming here because they don't have a lot of other options. Or they're looking to try and strike out and, and make a new name for themselves. So I think like through your you know three months here, um, you've gotten a lot better at kind of like getting a sense of like what what people kind of want out of this. And I think like honestly, like even though they may at times question <laughs> your aptitudes, I think the whole the, the, you don't actually really get a, a read that you're disliked or anything like that. I think there is at least still like a, a subtle admiration for you. <laughs> so awesome. That's, that's for Maris and now, and Cassandra as well. So um, how about you other folks? Bort mostly keeps to himself for most of the journey. If he's trying to make any like connections or relationships with anyone, it would definitely be with like the traders or the merchants or people who might have materials that he is interested in because um, I think to pass the time he's mostly going to be like if he has quarters in his quarters or at the bar just uh, tinkering away and crafting is what he's doing. Um, Mm -hmm. The journey is fairly long so I would imagine that he'd be trying to like craft small things just to help pass the time maybe he's trying to like impress some of the merchants or some of the traders that he meets um like if he's at the bar maybe he'll he'll either try to engage in like uh a drinking game with some of the other locals there or the other travelers or maybe he's trying to impress them kindred spirit in me (laughs) (laughs) maybe he's trying to impress them with like a small little device that he's that he's made awesome yeah i think that's that's super fun um so go ahead and do a crafting mind check um, and sure. I think what we'll do is we'll actually make that a little bit more difficult because you're making something that could be like admirable. So mm-hmm. let's do a five one on that. So you'll need a, at least one five. In mind, you said? In crafting mind. Crafting mind. And so if I have training in crafting, that's extra dice, correct? Uh, yeah. So you're going to add your mind, um, which is probably like okay. three or something. Yeah, it's three. Um, and then I have two levels of training in crafting. Oh, nice. So you're going to roll five dice. Yeah. And yeah. what does focus do again? Sorry. Focus is going to allow you to add the results. I got a two, two, four, four, and a five. <laughs> okay, well, you did it. <laughs> yeah, so I think at one point, um, you you make friends with, okay, you make friends with a Stormcast Eternal named Biggs Thunderguns. <laughs> he is... That's about right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Biggs and Bort. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Biggs has really Perfect big arms. Duo. Biggs actually, you, you know, ironically, you wouldn't think so, but he actually does have really big arms. <laughs> so he is, um, you know, he's a little bit of a, uh, not really mysterious, but 
He's an enigmatic sort of fellow. Um, he wears a um, bronze suit of Sigmarite armor. Um, you know, he's probably about eight feet tall and just like built like a like a Gears of War Marine, right? Um, he um, he he actually wears his helmet. He's one of those guys, you know, like those people in fantasy where they always wear their helmet. He's one of those. Oh, he no. never takes it off. Mm-hmm. So he's Same. always kind of like, yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's how you you bonded, actually. Yeah. You know, he's got like a, a straw always on hand to like, you know, drink stuff or like kind of like scoop <laughs> things in. We just grunted at each other once or twice, <laughs> yeah. and now we're friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. A bond forged in grunts. <laughs> And uh, he actually wears a helmet that is, um, instead of like a Stormcast helmet, that's normally like a kind of a neutral face. His helmet's actually shaped in the in a kind of like almost like a bowl. It's called like a, a Mornfang helmet, which is basically like a big sloping. Like imagine like a mix between like saber tooth tiger and a bull. He's kind of got that. Uh, and he's got like these like big golden curls kind of tumbling out the back of his helmet and around his shoulders. <laughs> awesome. And I think over drinks one day, he kind of says... Uh, your character's name bork Bork. hey uh hey bork (laughs) i uh i was thinking i need some kind of new sigil you know i feel like i'm too subtle i want to uh i want to have something painted right here and he kind of taps his chest just need uh (laughs) something painted here that really kind of tells people what i'm all about what do you uh what do you think you think you can hook me up with something a sigil for big thunder guns What do you? (laughs) Please, please tell me that is not all you'll say. (laughs) Please tell me he knows words. He knows words. If he has to say more, he will. But I mean, all all Biggs is looking for is like affirmation or not in this case. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just waiting for the inevitable team up between you and Frostglade, who also only speaks in one to two word sentences. That'll be amazing. (laughs) Gonna be like it's gonna be like the the first thirty minutes of Wally, where I'm just describing everything, and you guys just grunt occasionally. No, Bort, Bort will Bort is able to say more. Just not, yeah. not like you know chomping at the bit too. Yeah, he yeah, chooses fair. not to. That's the key. Yeah. Man, a few words. Uh, and what do you? Uh, what sigil do you uh, carve into uh, Biggs's breastplate? Um. I want to give him like a like a plate that I can uh, like meld onto his chest plate, or I mean like a like a di- like, like a dinner plate, uh, like a decorative uh, no, not, plate. Uh, no, not like a decorative plate. Like I've, <laughs> like I've carved or I've like smithed a a sigil for him that he can attach. It's a giant. It's a it's a golden halo that takes up the entire width of his. I'm assuming enormous chest, um, and it is it, it is too. It's two really muscly arms kind of embracing a heart. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. He's strong of arm and heart. Oh, I think um, you, you You know what? Uh, you can't tell, but you're pretty sure Big's head has a little, one single tear drip inside that helmet, but no one will ever know. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Feral? Brilliant. Side note, Franco, uh, I know mm-hmm. we talked about it before, but did you want to have a connection? Because I know uh, we talked about it. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, as I've... Feral recruiting you as help. I'll, I'll even take a quick moment to read from the, the little thing that I sent to Dave, just to, to make sure that we're Sweet. on the same page here. One second. Sweet. Uh, whether by chance or the machinations of some divine being, one particularly clear night, a bright flame fell to earth on the outskirts of town. In the morning, a golden warrior strode into town. That's you, by the uh-huh. way. Stormcast, she called herself. And she came with a proposition. Come aid my people in uniting the confederate in uniting and confederating the Sigmar Isles under the banner of Sigmar. Knowing that her family and town were in jeopardy, Cassandra volunteered in return for a place on the islands where they could rebuild and settle. And so the deal was struck. Sweet. All right. So I do know one person on this giant turtle, and that is Cassandra. Um, aside from that, though, Farrell's pretty much a loner. She doesn't like talking with many people, uh, whether that's because she thinks they're beneath her or she's just not into talking with people. No one knows. She spends a lot of time with her um, her eagle, whose name is Gina. It's named after her constellation. That's her constant companion. She likes uh-huh. to spend lots of time in the trees um, away. This turtle got trees? Yeah, the glade thing. 
I like this turtle. Glad yeah. we didn't name the pup <laughs> Turtle Soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're off. But yeah, she spends a lot of time alone. She'll talk if she needs to, but mostly to Cassandra. Um, oddly enough, no one ever hears her speaking to her eagle. Um, but some can kind of surmise that maybe they do have a connection deeper than just stares and the touch of a hand. Let's do um let's do a nature nature soul check as you're you're hanging out in the glade quite frequently. All right. So that is a four. So four okay, and they'll just be a four one here. Cool. I got a six, six, a four, a- and a five. <laughs> what are your dice, Sam? <laughs> They're lead. Uh, <laughs> they Three of them are plastic. One is metal. That's oh, it. so it's just that it. one dice is just kicking the shit out of the others. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's oh, what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think as you you know you spend time in this glade, I think you also actually from time to time probably make a little bit of a connection with Frostblade. I'll I'll leave that up to you two to kind of you know establish if you want to make a connection or anything. Um, but Frostlight cool. kind of does the same. You know, he he attends kind of a vigil in this forest. The Sylvanith, if if you're not aware, are um, people of the forest. Like he's literally a giant, twelve foot tall tree. So he's like um, an ant, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and you also actually at at times um, you're aware of in the front tower. It kind of is almost like you could kind of consider it like a magical lighthouse. You uh, are aware of, but um, similar to you, uh, being a broody person herself. So through that whole time, you also meet another Stormcast uh, in that tower, maintaining a visual over the ocean. And you know her to be Arrhenius Spitesworn, who is uh, a Stormcast. She's got bone white armor and has a velvet bandana that kind of comes down over one of her eyes. Um, She is pale with a very strong jaw uh, and, you know, pretty much a permanent scowl. Uh, I'm assuming you guys probably both scowl at the horizon in unison <laughs> without acknowledging yeah. each other. Um, <laughs> but, you know, similar uh, to, to that, um, she actually, um, at times in the, in the mornings, you will see her um, leave the lighthouse and um, kind of walk up and actually sit uh, with her legs overhanging the edge of the turtle shell and just sit there for, for hours. With, you that, uh, with that nature check, um, you actually get the impression that um, she is somehow communicating with Torlan. Hey there, mind if I cut in? It's, uh, it's me, Dave, your DM. We sat together in first period. I'm here with a couple announcements and then we'll get right back to the cake eating action. Uh, first things first, you might be wondering what's up with the lads out in Far and Swallow hunting down those missing villagers. Uh, me too. Uh, hopefully they don't die off screen. This is what I'm calling a shore leave episode, since these will be coming in between adventures as the players go through different endeavors, take some R&R, sometimes much needed R&R, or in this case, uh, we're going to introduce some new characters. So we're going to have this episode followed by a part two. And you know what? Week three, we're back with Phallus, Okri, and Frostglade to continue the mysterious case of the Grabby Ghouls. So we're going to get three weeks in a row of episodes. So you're going to get this this on week one, part two on week two, and then week three, we're back. Uh, next, I actually wanted to take some time to talk about a group that we found out about called No More Damsels. Uh, this is a charity group that is committed to making everyone feel welcome at gaming tables. Uh, if you are familiar with tabletop role-playing games, there's something really special about sitting down with friends, rolling dice, grabbing some salty snacks, and escaping into a fantastical world that is uh, completely divorced for sometimes the grim, dark realities of our life. Um, no More Damsels has resources for DMs that want to make sure everyone feels comfortable at their table. Uh, you can find links to No More Damsels in the show notes and on their site, you can find resources for anti-racism guides, guides for being an ally to transgender and non-binary use, and just a lot of things to make sure that, you know, if you're sitting down to game, everyone's welcome. So if you're a DM, player, or just in general interested in helping growing the tabletop community, please check it out. Sounds like people are drinking. Sounds like people are making all sorts of uh, unwilling friends or 
um, brooding alone in the woods. Uh, I think all those things together. Um, you are all called to a meet and greet. The other crew uh, is supposed to be coming back later today with a news from the town of Farn Swallow. Um, you know that um, maybe you're good friends, maybe you're mortal enemies. I don't want to say anything. Frostglade, Phallus, and Okri, they're supposed to be back. Uh, and you notice that they are taking a lot longer. They were supposed to make connection with Trenton Skiggs, but have yet to return. Um, so you were all uh, sitting around a single round table, um, a big square sheet cake in the middle that says, welcome back, rescuers. And it currently only has one slice cut out of it. Everyone else is waiting patiently. <laughs> Um, who had the slice of cake? I did. Mary yeah, did. That makes it that, that tracks. <laughs> probably, probably with hand marks, right? Uh, she, she, she civilized. There might be like, some icing that was taken off of the cake first with a finger, though. You're all uh, you're all sitting around this table. You know, it, it, the the festivities were supposed to start. Now, Dave, maybe I missed yeah. it, but we we have now arrived at the islands, or is this en route still? The islands are are quite spread out. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you'll have one island here, one, one far away. Um, the turtle has kind of like entered like the archipelago, you could imagine. Okay. So we're, we're technically like here, but we're not like, yeah, you're not like next to any particular islands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, like you, your, your operation is kind of started, you know, you're waiting as you kind of did the big travel, uh, over, uh, and now you're in the islands and now you are basically just starting to go on different missions. Um, and this was like your, um, the maiden voyage was those three going off to make one connection while uh, you were all were kind of preparing for your next one. Basically, the way this is going to work mechanically is I'm going to give you all uh, a big uh, C map, like a grid. And, you know, as you play, as you like do research or, you know, explore, ask questions, make connections, um, you're going to know where more things are. And between sessions, you're going to actually decide you know, what kinds of missions you want to go on, what's important to you, you know, so on, so on. But uh, those three, you like have their little starter adventure. And then we're going to kind of set things up more as you guys decide uh, what you want to do. So yeah, you're sitting around this, uh, this big uh, party table. Um, there's like the, the triangle, you know, pennants kind of hung around the central chamber. You know, it's, it's kind of a quite elaborate, fancy gold structure originally that has kind of like corroded a little bit over your you know, you travel through like the seawater. But inside here, you know, you got this big, grand, round wooden table that you're sitting around. And, you know, you have a couple like little kids tables you could imagine kind of off the side for the people that aren't really part of the binding. There's a few other folks here, um, like the other, the characters I mentioned, like Biggs and Arrhenius are here, um, as well as a uh, fellow you know by the name of Decula Brightmane, who is your Lord Ordinator. He's kind of like the Castellan of your, uh, your big fortress. Um, he's a big, broad, um, he's actually remarkably short for a Stormcast, um, but he's got his, um, well, when you started the journey, um, he was pretty, um, pretty broad and pretty muscular and lean, but you notice like ever, for a little while, he can't really wear his breastplate anymore. Um, so now he just has like a, a nice little doublet kind of covering up, but he's, uh, munching on a Dutch baby as he is looking at a sea map and starting <laughs> to chart things out. Dutch I'm sorry, baby? what? I think yeah, we've right. been over this before one, once. Here we go again. <laughs> uh, a Dutch baby is uh, a form of pastry, like a popover, if you will. Um, it's often cooked in a cast iron pan. It's basically a big pancake, um, often Why covered with pancake? fruits. <laughs> it's, more, it's more colorful this way. Just munching on a Dutch child. Yeah. Um, His name is Dracula, after all. <laughs> what, one thing I don't I don't know if everyone did is um like physical descriptions. Could we do that when we're like Yeah, great like, idea. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not volunteering uh, to... first, but <laughs> <laughs> Right. Hey, can we do this but not me? <laughs> Got it. Here, let me dive in first. Um Cassandra is kind of a middle aged woman. Um she's got very dark skin and long frizzy hair, which she holds down underneath her 10 gallon hat um she always walks around with a revolver strapped to her hip it's um i i guess i don't know the exact name of what would a revolver would be I, I guess an athermatic revolver it would be my best guess um sounds fantasy terms, yeah yeah that's that's what she got of course um and uh you know she she spends a lot of time with animals and kind of like doing hard work so she's She's got kind of like the the smell of the stables around her. Cool. Dylan, now you can go. Oh, yeah. okay. 
Uh, what did you expect? Did you expect me to describe your character to you? Well, I didn't know that you were going to talk about what she was doing. Um, yeah, so Maris, Maris Honeysuckle. Uh, she is in her early 20s, early mid 20s, looks younger uh, than she is. She's about five foot or just shy there. She's pretty She's pretty short for a human. Um, she's got auburn, red hair, uh, kind of messy, long on the top, short in the back with just this like seven inch long rat tail braided hanging off the backside of her head. She wears really colorful clothing that's really loose. Lots of freckles to the point that it's like almost nothing but freckles on her face. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Cool. Mariel, do you want to go next? Sure. Bort is, he's a dwarden, so he looks, I guess, kind of like a dwarf. Um, he's very old. You can't. <laughs> um, he's about this is, five feet. This is Sam. He's a man, so he looks kind of like Sorry. a man. <laughs> only um, only kind of. He's about five feet tall as well, so almost the same Aww. height. Um, but he's mostly covered in his i think it's called the ether rig is that what it is yep. it's a giant set of armor that he wears but it is also what his weapons and all of his tools and all of his contraptions are attached to so you can't really see what's underneath but imagine like a giant metal rig maybe a backpack and the back of it is a flat top it's an anvil the the back the top back <laughs> of his whole rig is an anvil and it Gonna has back problems it has arms <laughs> like metal crafted arms um coming out of it for like holding and clamping things um and it's also he also has a giant i think ether an ethermite hammer that he wields the face area is like um <laughs> He's wearing a helmet and right at the on the forehead is a hinge to his goggles. Um, and so he can flip them up sometimes. And maybe when he's at the bar, when he's trying to relax a little bit, you've seen him uh, <laughs> yeah. flip up his goggles and you've noticed that his eyes are both kind of milky. You're not sure if he's blind. He definitely oh. kind of sees, uh. Uh, but no one's ever know. really questioned I don't know him. what it is, but the, the description milky eyes has always made <laughs> me uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, it goggle, worked, yeah. <laughs> the goggles are large, gold-framed, um, gold-rimmed, and one of them is, the lens of one of them is red. The other one is just blue so he can see in 3d it's translucent yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the like the old ones <laughs> question does he always wear yeah. his portable anvil like is he always yes. in his contract that contraption okay yeah you assume that maybe he doesn't wear it when he sleeps but you don't know for sure or when he bathes <laughs> or when he bathes who knows He's, he sounds like he would get tired after a short walk like the amount of weight he carries. <laughs> no nah, man, he's jacked underneath that. He's yeah. built like a brick shit house. This is just <laughs> this is just something that you have to like get used to when you become an engineer. Just the yeah. crushing weight of your anvil. <laughs> 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 um, I want to know. I know a lot of the of the Caradron have um, armor, kind of like their mask. Kind of you, they pretty you know they're dwarves. They kind of always have like some kind of facial hair. Yeah. I was wondering, you know, in his mask. It's part of the helmet. I love that. So it's part of the helmet. I love that. And so I was going to ask, like, does he have a, a type of facial hair, a type of beard that is like built into the the structure like, of the helmet? It's, I don't know what the technical term is, but it's like the the part of the helmet uh, that guards like your yeah. like your mouth or whatever. But it it is definitely crafted to take the shape of like a big mustache. It's custom. Mm-hmm. And uh, Feral? Right. So, Feral, um, as opposed to most Stormcast Eternals, instead of the heavy, ornate gold armor, she has blue armor. So it's a full set, pretty much the same design as regular Stormcast Eternals, though. She has a singular feather earring in her left ear. And on her right bicep, she has a shred of ripped cloth on her arm, the colors that her father used to wear. So a deep emerald green. You ask her about her father, though, she somewhat doesn't remember him in as much detail as she would like. She carries uh, a bow, uh, the Realm Hunter's bow, which she straps on her back along with her quiver. 
And she also has a great sword, which is the Storm Gladius sword. As far as other uh, uh, weapons, you don't know. That's all you've ever seen. <laughs> she doesn't really try to hide them too much. <laughs> it could be other weapons. So the Stormcast Eternals basically are, um, for the uninitiated, they are like warriors who died and their souls were uh, basically taken, uh, reforged into like these big metal giant warriors. Um, well, they're not metal, I suppose. They're wearing metal mm-hmm. armor, but they're like literally like reforged in a storm to become the Stormcast Eternals. And I think so. Feral was an elf in her last life, right? So yes. she is she still kind of like she does have features, yeah. yeah. So the pointed ears and sharp features, but she is a baby Stormcast Eternal. She hasn't been reforged like fifty times, which is apparently a thing that can happen. So she's pretty mm-hmm. new to the whole thing. Awesome. Uh, so uh, anyone want to kind of kick off anything? Are you guys just like hanging around around this cake or anyone going to go do anything? Just hang out. Um, does the cake have anything written on it? I think you said before. Uh, I did. I don't remember what I said. So now it says, welcome, <laughs> welcome back, back, successful welcome adventurers. Back. Yeah, it says like, welcome yeah. back, adventurers or something. <laughs> <laughs> but adventurers has like a heart over something. There's no eyes, but it's just <laughs> over some, one of the letters. <laughs> just awkwardly placed <laughs> um and you said there was a it was, I, I heard dracula in my head but dracula? that's not his name De- decula. <laughs> decula decula that's decula the one decula. 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 Yeah. um sweet so cassandra will walk up to, to decula who i assume that she has some passing knowledge that like this is the the captain of the ship so to speak yeah, so he's um, the the kind of the structure here is there's no like singular leader uh, of this organization. It's kind of very much like a group organization, um, but he's kind of uh, responsible for uh, maintaining the like the structure of the the castle and the fortifications and stuff like that. But yeah, he's a, he's a great big guy. He's a he's a very friendly fellow. Um, he's got um, kind of stark white hair and against like warm kind of brown skin and he's got like these two triangular like mutton chops that kind of come out from his face and um you know he's got you know maybe maybe a couple crumbs in there but uh, he's happy to see you as you come over okay decula hello right. there cassandra <laughs> and now i have to if i can do my so... my voice all right let's see let's uh, take, take number one everyone take take number one <laughs> yeah. hello there cassandra <laughs> it's been too long since you guys were role-playing Forgive me, but uh, it looked like the the guests of honors are a might bit late. Uh, well, you know, Fawn Swallow's about a, a four hour. I'm taking on a southern drawl now. I got to reset. I, I got to reset. My, my accent is a is a is a wee bit uh, contagious. Some have said. <laughs> <laughs> Fawn Swallow's about a you know a, a three four hour uh, boat ride, but uh, uh, you know <laughs> who knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about his Deckard Cane, and then now, like, <laughs> that's just something else. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> Every, is everybody going to have a southern drawl now? Like, it's is this... <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not attempting that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so I don't even know what you said. I, I, you'll have to for, you'll have to forgive me. I'm I was. Uh, I was somewhere else. You know, please oh, repeat oh, yourself. Oh, 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 think nothing of it, sugar. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he kind of was like, well, I haven't, we haven't heard from them in a while, but uh, I'm sure they're fine. Uh, after all, they got phallus with them, and, you know, he's always alert and on watch. Is, uh, is phallus a, a thing or a person? <laughs> you, you would know, you would know phallus, and, uh, but uh, Dekilla kind of pauses. You and, would know phallus. <laughs> Why are we saying like Phalus or something? I don't know. Or like, why? Just. You would know. Uh, We're not going to get that. Can, we can't get through like a single oh conversation. My God. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Reset. We're professionals, everybody. <laughs> to kill just like wait, walks away and sits down in the corner and rethinks. Rethinks today. <laughs> well, uh,. What are we all uh, waiting around here for then? If uh, guest honors ain't coming, uh, he kind of shrugs. He's like, "Oh well, uh, I don't know. You, you can wander around. I want, but if you leave, you're gonna miss the cake. If they show up, you're gonna be really embarrassed. Really embarrassed." Bort's gonna saunter up over to, and he and he's gonna he's gonna tap Cassandra on the shoulder with one of his little metal 
tool arms. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. Cassandra <laughs> turns to him and she she looks him in the eye and she goes, "Or if you're gonna grunt at me again, you can just go sit yourself back down." Uh, you, uh, mm, fancy a drink? <laughs> and now you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to just do like a, a drinking mini game with Cassandra. <laughs> yeah, we can totally do that. We can do is we can do an opposed check. Let's do let's do a forti- yeah, fortitude body. That All makes right. the most sense. I got to warn you, this is one of my favorite pastimes. What is um, what does the drink look like? <laughs> uh, yeah. So who are you going to get to pour it for you? You can go talk to uh, what was the halfling's name? He would be here tending, tending like a little fold up table bar. His name mm-hmm is todd okay so the halfling's name is verney berg's bottom and um he um, <laughs> okay. he slides he slides over he's wearing a, a kettle on his head uh and he's got like this um this apron that says um bartenders do it every night after 9 p.m oh. and um he, <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, he starts like hey uh, what you guys want you want some shots <laughs> now Vern, hit me with the good stuff okie dokie berg's bottom special here we go one of the same uh he pours he um uh reaches into his sleeve and pulls out a long um thin bottle you know it's like a, it's almost like a vinaigrette bottle um he um he shakes it back and forth and you notice there are two two spheres inside um and as he shakes it the the one sphere goes to one end and he shakes it back and they smash together and um, it wisps into this like corkscrew shape of like black, almost like clay that like kind of goes into the rest of the like, green liquid. And then it kind of slowly bubbles over. Um, and he um, <laughs> thump, takes off the top, um, produces two glasses from somewhere, uh, puts them down on the table and pours uh, two uh, <laughs> shots. The consistency of um, probably like a black forest cake. As it pours out <laughs> into the cup, Jesus. Um, <laughs> nice. And he uh, nice. he slides them off to, uh, across the table to the two of you. Uh, well, drink up, Berg's bottom special. Well, Fern, I'm I'm much obliged, but we will have to have a talk about your <laughs> your storage habits. <laughs> I always got the Berg's bottom special available. You know, just Ooh. in case this birthday party is gonna get a little blue. <laughs> Well, one way or another, it's a, it's a great deal appreciated. Thank you, Vern. It uh, looks great. <laughs> Maris is just like off to the side watching, shoveling cake in her mouth, not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> like, yeah, just, just like going to town being like, oh God, <laughs> do I want to take part? Yeah, Farrell's sitting around the table. She's holding her great sword, kind of spinning spinning the sword a bit, grinding the tip into the ground. She looks mildly interested. Just one eyebrow slightly raised. As this drinking contest starts, I think just in the background is this tense kind of stare off between the two of you. Uh, and you just hear Dekilla shouting at Maris to stop eating all the goddamn cake. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's so damn uh, and good! <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we're going to do an opposed check. I unhinge one side of my golden mustache to reveal the rest of my face so that I can drink this <laughs> properly. <laughs> Just creak. Cass uh, tips her hat and she goes, well, as they say, bottoms up. <laughs> I turned the glass upside down and just the drink just sticks to the bottom of it. Like, mm. <laughs> the Dairy Queen Blizzard test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. I've never been in a situation where that phrase was more apt. <laughs> <laughs> like the blizzard, nothing comes out. <laughs> oh. uh, all right, so both of you do a four. Actually, you know, this is going to be a 5-1 uh, fortitude body check. 5-1 fortitude. F- f- you have to have five successes. Oh. And you need to have, one, you have, to have one, one, one five or more. Okay, I can't pass. Yeah. I've got two body and two that fortitude. Nope, that's not how that works. What? As no. long as you roll one five, you're okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, well then. Yeah. Go. You might be okay. I might Whoever has be. more successes wins. Oh, I, got, I got one success. I got uh, a one, two, three, and a six. I got zero of them. Oh. I got two dice and oh, no. of them. I think um, <laughs> as you are trying to uh, get this um, rather congealed feeling shot out, you kind of like do the, the ketchup bottle 
And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> it falls no. all at once kind of back as you like kind of gave up and you like are starting to like complain about it. And so it kind of like hits the back of your throat uh, as you're kind of like talking uh, and you kind of have like this Grunt very out. aesthetic. Oh. Yeah. As you're grunting <laughs> gladly at it. <laughs> I close my mustache back up. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can tell that uh, Cassandra's done this once or twice before because she actually doesn't place the glass to her mouth. She Sorry. she sticks her finger into it and then like scrapes around inside of the glass. <laughs> and, and, Maris, and there's Maris going <laughs> on the cake, laughing, choking, dying. Um, and as this uh, this all happens, uh, you hear a uh, a horn over the like kind of emanate throughout the room and you know that to mean that uh, there's something out on the water I'll do some hang on I'll do some foley <laughs> you hear that great horn, great horn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, Maris perks up pickles <laughs> her lip I think falls off her lip yeah, yeah. <laughs> perks up puts the fork down pickles her uh, companion pops out and I didn't describe it but it's a mink and its fur is essentially the constellations of the stars so you can see all familiar constellations constellations rolling over its fur it's a living star map <gasps> magical right that was bad. Uh, so it, it pops up like what the hell is that noise and then she's going to look at uh, bort cassandra and Farrell and be like we should go check that out what's that i don't know what my voice is yet we're working on it <laughs> <laughs> i playfully push bort a little bit i imagine he's sitting down on like a bar stool you can't tell if he's sitting he's so short <laughs> you almost probably would be able sure. to sit on his back right because he's got like the anvil yeah you might be able to just like hop a ride <gasps> oh and yeah. then he'd be on his back like a turtle and he couldn't get up <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we are the turtle castle. You head out uh along the real quick port starboard. Which way is which? Port is the left side? Yep. No, that's not right. It is correct. Yeah, port <laughs> port is the left. Uh, I don't know about that. Because port and left had the same amount of uh letters in them. So as you uh you step outside, it's a little bit of uh it's around dusk and you are uh hearing the waves of the Soulfire Sea splash up against you know, the immense sides of Torlan as she, you know, kind of loosely skims across the water. And I want awareness checks from all y'alls. A 4-1 awareness mind check. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> go, 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 go. I have four successes. Oh, damn. Oh, I have two successes. So I've got uh, two successes as well. All right, Bork, with your milky, disgusting eyes. <laughs> with the Google's help, okay. <laughs> and, and excuse, me, <laughs> excuse you, though, Dave. Are you saying Bork as in B-O-R-K? <laughs> Sorry, um, so if I have a... I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. If I have a two in, in awareness, am I, and I'm rolling mine, which would be 3d6, is it plus two? Or is what's, it two so what's six? your awareness? What's your uh, training My, in awareness? I don't have training in awareness. But natural awareness is two. Uh, no, that's okay. We're okay. we're doing a specific check. Yeah. Okay, oh, natural awareness is kind of like your oh, your yeah. how prone you are to like stumbling across traps and stuff. Gotcha. Oh, that's a separate thing. Okay. So I got a six, six, and a four. Okay. Damn. So we got a couple successes. Bort. I wrote down Bork before, so I'm gonna change it back to Bort. <laughs> I sent you my character uh, sheet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, you look at it? Uh, that must be auto- embarrassing. <laughs> As I said, with your disgusting milky eyes, you spot coming over the horizon a ship. And with a roll like that, uh, you actually notice that you do not see any living things on the deck of the ship. It is completely derelict. The hull of the ship, actually, with that check as well. Do you have any like weird goggle abilities and stuff? Uh, I know uh, Nico playing Okri has a bunch of bullshit goggle stuff. I just have <laughs> a god's eye, which is like a laser weapon. <laughs> oh my god! That's you have amazing. Superman eyes. <laughs> it's uh, it's just one. It's the the lens that's red. That's my that's my laser we- my medium range <laughs> laser weapon. I don't think it's gonna help me see any better. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think this is the time to use that god's eye. Might as well just fire her willy nilly and destroy the ship. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Put it on a shark. Fires up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you you see a caravel-sized ship um, drifting aimlessly past Torland. It is not moving towards you. I don't recognize the ship, though. You could do... Mm, no, I can't see really... Well, so do you have any connections with, like, trading or merchant groups or anything? Yes. Like, For okay, sure. Those one... are, like, the only people that I really care to... Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. So let's do a lore mind check. I think uh, this would be... Let's do a 6-1 on this. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Didn't no. Happen. Okay. No. Um unfortunately you you're not aware of this ship but you get the impression that it's probably that's because it's a small time vessel, not oh. something super extravagant. I'll just say to the I'll say to like the the group or whatever like, mm, something's wrong. Well, I'd agree that with that sentiment. Seems to me like any ship out in the sea ought to have a crew. I don't know what we're going to do with that information, but there, there goes that ship. Well, weird uh, ship. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> anyway, so. back to cake. <laughs> um, left. Except if I do recall, we did hear uh, a horn being blown. Yeah, you actually, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, you actually hear it coming from behind you. And coming out, um, you actually see big thunder guns um, walking out. Um, he is a knight heralder, um, which means that he is actually, he has a horn. But for him specifically, he wants to have his guns available at all times. So he actually has a appara metal apparatus that kind of comes up in front of his mouth, like a, like a harmonica one-man band situation. <laughs> um, he can <laughs> blow into it. And he's got these, like, he's got this, like, pipe organ sort of, like, thing coming up over his shoulders that blasts out the sound um so when he does that um Damn. he actually walks around and is actually able to signal you uh maris has witch sight so witch sight essentially being able to track or s sense magic whether it's artifact or spells mm. hers appears through smell and it's through spices and sometimes pepper so if there's a shit ton of mag magic coming at her she starts sneezing yeah sorry sorry wh which site are you talking about which sight what? Which site? Yeah, but which site? In a which site? <laughs> that one flew right over her head. <laughs> but thank you for catching that, Marielle. Sorry, continue. I interrupted Sorry. you there for a very bad joke. Yeah. Uh, you smell magic. Is that is that what I got? Hello, Maris. Dylan. Dylan. Do we lose? Do we lose Maris? <laughs> oh, no. oh, she muted herself because she went like in a giggle fest. Is that oh, what I happened? Killed her. I, I, I lost my shit laughing and apparently absentmindedly <laughs> muted myself while I was doing that. But, uh, yeah, so, yes. so she has witch sight, which she's taught herself, and I and I bring that up just in case there is anything funky going on and if there's any like bout of magic because she could smell it and essentially be like hey it's coming from over there and proceeding to sneeze depending upon the frequency <laughs> of that magic oh, she's got inconvenient magic allergies i love it yes. <laughs> um okay yes and she got two successes. Wait, what was the role for for, for the trick? <laughs> <laughs> she was a success and a four. That's all I know and I think it's good. Yeah, that's good. You you smell oh, some shit. Nice. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> you you smell um I I don't really understand how this would necessarily I guess the wind just hits it just right and it banks off the bow and, and you kind of catch um a wisp of uh of magical stank stank spice. <laughs> well, spice like you know if it's the... it's some spicy magic spicy magic okay coming off uh coming off that uh, husk of a ship but what will you do with that information <laughs> i don't know what that is <laughs> you sneeze uh maris proceeds to sneeze looks at everyone else and goes hey friends there's some magic on that ship right there <laughs> I'm gonna turn to Biggs and be like, "Ugh, Ugh. So, what's up with that ship?" 
Uh, well, I mean, uh, I don't really know what it would be, but uh, if you want to take one of the uh, secondary uh, lifeboats and uh, take on uh, over there and do some rowing, you might be able to check it out and see uh, if anything's going on. It's me bigs. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well it do seem like a like a nice thing to do to just check on uh see if there's any trouble on that ship uh, if nothing else uh might be some uh loot on board or something oh maybe some materials oh, okay 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 i'm gonna i'm gonna turn to cassandra i could always do some recon with gina instead of getting her hands dirty well i think that's a clever idea there and i guess out of nowhere um a beautiful blue-colored eagle is just going to kind of materialize. No one knows where, but it's kind of rainbow. It's kind of shimmery, and it's going to land on my shoulder. I dig that. And Dave, can I send it over to the ship? Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah, so I think uh, I don't know, really know the rules for your companion, but I think like you could totally um, get uh, your star eagle to go take a look. Now, I don't know how you would get it to relay intel to you um from what i gathered from reading the article um it kind of seems like a telepathic kind of communication we have really strong bond yeah i mean i have a strong bond with my husky but she doesn't tell me <laughs> as much as I want her to. but if it's a if it's a telepathic thing then we could totally make that work i do remember that it was telepathic but i don't know if there's a range on it or something but i mean it can always go scout come back and then yeah. have that telepathy relay moment. the information yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah, it says right here that they are capable of communing telepathically. Oh, cool. All right, sweet. Sweet, yeah. So do a beast handling soul check before two. Okay. This is basically going to reflect, like, how capable Gina is to, um, you know, do exactly as you're ordering. Okay. One, six, two, and five. Yeah, that'll do it. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, uh, Gina goes, like, kind of, like, I was going to say screeching, but, you know, kind of skimmering over across the water, <laughs> makes a kind of, like, a, a swoop over the ship, and, you know, kind of, like, pauses a little bit on, like, the, the crow's nest of the ship and, and kind of flies back. And I don't know how you want to role play talking to Gina. I'll kind of defer to you on that one. Every time you guys say Gina, I'm just thinking Gina Davis. Um, you can actually uh, tell that there was some kind of fight on the deck of the ship. Okay. And there are blood stains and some bodies. There are no bodies. No bodies, just blood stains and yeah. knocked over crap. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I will call back Gina from that ship. That's a good girl. What did you see? Hmm. hmm. Okay. Are you gonna Are you gonna tell us what your bird saw, or <laughs> are you gonna sit there just uh, in silence? Hold. She's relaying the information. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> so, Cassandra takes a seat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there was a skirmish, but no bodies. She didn't see any life. So I guess we could proceed if you so choose. Well, it seems mm -hmm. like a decent thing to Did do. you see any gold? <laughs> nice. But that is not my first interest when scouting out an abandoned ship. Oh, oh mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me like the decent thing to do would go over that would be to go over that ship and make sure there's no survivors. Or else, I mean, I phrase that a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> uh, didn't Dick say no? His name's not Dick. Deck. <laughs> Dick Decula. Decula. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Decula, yeah. Decula. Uh, did Decula say something about there being like a, a life raft or something that we could take over there, or is that you as the DM saying that? Big no, said that. Big said that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think maybe we should take that uh that life raft that Big was uh, talking about, and maybe we should go check it out. Because does anyone recognize that boat? Could it be our friends? And she kind of asks like a few more questions until like someone finally tells her to shut up. <laughs> well, I'm not a seafaring <laughs> folk, but taking a life raft out onto the great blue ocean doesn't seem like a very smart plan to me. Mm, but there could be got, gold. Do you <laughs> got any better plans? Staying here. <laughs> <laughs> but someone on that boat could be injured and they might need our help. Yeah, I'm with her. That is that is an astute observation, and I I fully agree with that. There could be gold. 
<laughs> and there could be, and maybe I those people will pay us gold. Sorry, Farrell, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just check it out. Well, we're doing no good standing around here. Uh, you look up and, and Biggs is standing next to the life ro- rafts and just kind of waves at you. <laughs> Uh, and then he like points with two fingers at the life raft and then he, and then he taps his watch Maris puts down her cake and at a jog starts jogging towards going just a little bit faster than Boris <laughs> yeah Cass, Cass climbs on in I'd like to voice my opinion that this is a poor idea uh, Maris is just super excited because this is her first adventure since she joined the Soulbound. So she's just- hey, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Bort steps into the life raft and it like it like sinks considerably <laughs> under his weight, but like just to the point where like the edge of the boat is like touched just above the waterline. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> This does not. <laughs> this does not assuage my fears. <laughs> I feel for the hand on Cassandra's uh, form. It's, it'll be fine. <laughs> Biggs watches as the the Dwarden and the Stormcast both get in, uh, and he kind of casts a look over to uh, Cassandra and Maris. And Biggs doesn't want to say anything, um, but he's concerned for your well being. <laughs> <laughs> I give him a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Give them two thumbs up.